What can developers do for business? Nowadays, your manager might come to you and say, AI seems to be cool. I want to do AI. And what can you do in this case? Well, you might suggest to integrate in your business application a REC chatbot, which is an AI chatbot, which knows about the business knowledge of your company. And you can do this easily with Spring AI. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. My name is Elmar Brauch. I'm software developer and architect at Deutsche Telekom and currently exploring AI for the business in Deutsche Telekom. What's actually a REC? Well, you can find details about this in my blog article, which fits to this video. It's REC chatbot with Spring AI using a vector database and AWS Bedrock. But in this video, I'm going to use um, GPT on Azure. So the architecture of a REC looks as in this picture here. We have here a user calling our REC chat service. The REC chat service is calling a large language model. In this picture, it's um, AWS Bedrock, uh, but it can be also OpenAI GPT. So um, we are calling this chat um, to get answers, but that would just be integrating a regular AI into your application. But in this case, it knows nothing about the company specifics, about the company knowledge. And that's where the vector database comes into the play. Here we have a vector database in which we store the knowledge of our company. And then the chat, the rec chat acts like this. It gets a message from the user, checks for documents fitting to this message, and then sends everything to the AI, to the chat API of the AI service get back an answer which reflects then the company knowledge and sends this back to the user and the user is happy happy because he gets a specific answer to his needs with the particular company and the business. How does the business knowledge comes into the vector database? Therefore, again, we can use um, a so-called AI embedding service. In this example, it's um, Amazon Bedrock Titan embedding service, but it could be also the embedding service from, from OpenAI. And you build on your own a so-called document importer that's a spring bean, which collects the data from any company source that could be PDFs, it could be other databases, content management system, systems, APIs, whatever. Yeah, it collects the data, stores it in the database and Spring AI will automatically for you integrate the embedding service to store the content in combination with a vector, which is then used for the similarity search via vector database. Yeah, so um, let's get started with code now by switching to the IDE. And we will build first here the left part, which is a simple AI integration into your um, application. Okay, so I prepared a little Spring Boot project um, and in order to integrate AI into it, um, you just need this dependency. Spring AI Azure OpenAI Spring Boot Starter has a strange name for a Spring Boot Starter and that's because it's currently in Spring AI Milestone release. So as soon as this is like an official version one, then um, probably the name will change to something, you know, like Spring Boot Starter, uh, AI Azure OpenAI, something like this. But we will see, you will see. As of today, it's like this. And then you can already set up a simple AI chat service. That's what I have done here. It's again a simple Spring Bean and I inject an Azure OpenAI chat model. From where does this come? Well, it is automatically provided by this Spring AI library in case you defined upfront the details um, in properties. And there you see Spring AI Azure OpenAI chat is enabled. So we need this. We have to define the connection um, to the 
GPT AI service. As I mentioned before in the picture, it was AWS, but this time it's Azure OpenAI. Sorry for this little confusion. Yeah. So here we have an API key, which is a secret, and we have like an URL pointing to the de to, to Azure. Yeah. And we need also to define a deployment. Your deployment of the um, GPT service might have a special name. In my case, it's GPT for Turbo and Preview. And um, this together builds like um, the endpoint where I can reach it. You can define also some more options to fine tune um, the AI, like um, here done in this line, but like that's out of scope for now. Let's just see how to plug it together with um, Spring AI. So as mentioned before, that's what we need. And then we have the Spring AI chat service again, which gets now here successfully um, dependency injected this chat model. And then the chat functionality is pretty simple. We get an incoming message from our user. We wrap it into a Spring AI user message. The Spring AI user message is then wrapped into a Spring AI prompt. And the prompt is simply put into the call method of the chat model. That's it. Like the message is two times wrapped and then sent to um, the AI model and we get back an AI response, which has also like data structure. So we fetch the result and then the output and that's what we give back to the user. For this, I use of course um, a simple REST controller, which has then this simple AI chat service integrated this one and here it's just used in uh, the body of a post method or like a post handling method. Yeah. Let's see this in action by simply starting the application as a Spring Boot application. And when it's started, I will switch to Postman and send a simple uh, chat message uh, like keep in mind my context is I'm working for Deutsche Telekom and I try to build something for the business and our business is um, selling fixed line internet connection to our customers so a customer might have the following question my company is in a small town called Niederramstadt next to um, my uh, my, my place of living and which internet connection is available there. Yeah, though that is the question. Deutsche Telekom has business in German. That's why I use here German messages. And if I send this to the AI, I will probably get back a general answer, which you would get also uh, in the case that you use chat GPT. Yeah, you see, um, it's, it's talking in general about internet connection. It knows about the town because that's part of the training data and it gives like a very big answer coming from the GPT training data. So that's what we get here. So far, no company specific knowledge. Let's change this now by introducing a rack. I will stop the application and in the chat controller, I will flip now to the rack chat service, which I also prepared. So let's have a look into this. What is the difference here? We have again a simple spring bean. We have the chat model and in the chat method, we are doing the same steps mostly again. Yeah, we're wrapping the message into a user message. Um, then we do two new things and afterwards we put a prompt into the chat model and give back the results. So let's have now um, a look into the new thing. We build a so-called context message and then the prompt is a list of several messages and not just anymore as it was, as it was before, just the user message. Yeah, now it's like system message and user message. System message, another word for, word for context message. So what is the context message? Pretty simple, the context message yeah, um, consists of two things. First of all, 
it's based on a system prompt template. So here we have a template and we create a message out of it. And this template um, describes what the AI should act like. Yeah? In this case, it says um, support the customer with questions to the internet connection. And then it continues explaining use the information from the document parts defined in this system message. The documents part is here. Documents is just a placeholder. The placeholder is replaced here by putting this map in it. And the value is like the similar documents. And here comes the rec into play because we are connecting to the vector database using the spring vector store. And in this vector store, we make a similarity search based on the message of the user, like the question of the user. Then we search for similar documents fitting to this question of the user. The documents are then just streamed. Um, we extract just the content, the text in the document, and then I um, connect them to one big string. Like that is the search and the handling of the result. But the interesting question is how do the documents come into the vector database and how do we get the vector database injected to our spring bean? Yeah. Let's start with the injection. The vector store is coming from spring AI and spring AI provides a vector store as soon as you add dependencies like this one. So here we have spring AI PG vector store, but here we have already vector store and that is providing a vector store bean. If there is a connection to a database, in this case, PostgreSQL, that's why I have also here the PostgreSQL um, runtime libraries for Spring. And of course, I need to configure it in my application properties. So before we have defined the chat model, now we define also the connection to the PostgreSQL database. Um, here's a Docker command how to run a PostgreSQL with vector store in a simple Docker container. You can use this. You can find this in my blog article, which I will link in the description. Yeah. And the other important thing for the vector store is that it knows about embeddings. Yeah, because um, as shown before in this picture, yeah, we need embeddings calculated by an embedding service to store. Uh, the vector and the content of the document in the vector store and in the vector database to access it via the vector store bean. And this embeddings happens with an embedding service and the embeddings service, you can see it here. I use Spring AI Azure Open AI Embedding Service. I enable it like this and I defined also a model for it. And with this, I integrated the vector search in the database. Uh, in, in the application, I integrated the vector search in the application. But how is the vector database filled with documents? That's another simple thing. Yeah, here I have a document importer spring bean. Pretty simple. It has the same vector store injected via dependency injection. It has also a JDBC template, but I use the JDBC template just to delete the vector store at the beginning. Yeah, like this is executed once when the application starts for demo reasons. Yeah, so then I delete the whole vector store database in the PostgreSQL, and then I re-import the documents again. In my case, I have just a simple uh, example document which I wrap into a Spring AI document. I make a list out of it and then I put this list in the accept method of the vector store. Like the vector store has probably just two simple methods you need to know. The accept method to take documents, automatically use the embedding service to calculate the vector and then store vector and document content in the database. And um, the other method is the search service, which we have seen here, vector store similarity search. Yeah? So that's it. Document importer imports a document in the database and the other one is searching it. Um, my document 
is again written in German. Uh, more or less, it's explaining that on the countryside, you can get a new, unexisting, innovative um, saltwater internet connection, which offers a bandwidth of 1 million megabit per second. So that's thousand times faster than fiber today. And as I said before, it's unexisting, but um, I do not tell this um, the rack and the database here, I'm saying this is existing. That's like um, specific knowledge to my company, which you cannot find in the general training data of um, the GPT model. And, and that's how I prove that the vector database is used in the chat by giving an answer based on that. So let's start this application now. When it starts, we will see um, the logs about writing the stuff into the vector database. Yeah, here it's retrieving embeddings. That's when it is taking a document using the embedding service, get the vector, the embedding, and then store it in the vector database as you can see it here. And then the service is available. And let's now um, use again the same question, my company in the town Nieder Amstadt, uh, which internet connection can I use to serve fastest? And now the expected answer is different. Yeah, we expect that AI is using um, the company knowledge and it's telling me something about salt water internet connection. And here we have it and it says 1 million megabit per second on um, download uh, is available. The document is also telling something about sweet water connection for upload. And, and we can see all of that in the answer which we got from AI. And that proves that we have now a rack with company specific knowledge. And if a user starts chat with our business applications chatbot, um, this chatbot will be as smart as ChatGPT but having also the company specific knowledge about our products and so on. And that's how we can give a special experience for the user in understanding and using our services. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forgive, forget to give me a thumb up and to subscribe to my channel. In the next video, I will show you how AI can call backend functionality. So see you next time.